Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is a workshop uh, for UW CISA 2015 pre-conference workshop. And this video is just to go over the content that we covered in that workshop. And in this case, what we're doing is we're in a retail sales environment. Uh, some case stocks that you should know is that prices are updated every month for all products. Assume no taxes. Uh, to determine if the sale determine if the sale is actually recorded and calculated. So the procedures that we're going to perform are to reconcile the sales data, which is the sales twenty fourteen uh, sales data twenty fourteen, to the financial statements, which is sales total Excel file. Uh, verify the appropriate prices for each of the sales. So use the pricing data. Recalculate the price extension. So basically take um, the price times quantity, and factoring the discount. And then randomly select 25 sales transactions from the invalid transactions. So let's go ahead and get started. So I already have the data imported. First thing I want to do is I want to check the total. There's a, we're going to do a couple of degrees of aggregation for this. So here I'm just going to do run field statistics. And I'm going to see that the total here tells me that it's 351 million. And if I go to the sales total here, and I'm going to see it's 351 million 641,000, uh, the same amount in aggregate. But I, I still also want to know whether or not they're different by store by month. But well, the problem here in the sales data is I, I don't have the month. I only have this date. So what I'm going to be doing here is creating a new uh, month column. So here I'm going to call it month. And I'm going to make it a virtual character. Because on the other table set, other data set, it is a character as well. So here I have my f equation editor. And I'm going to be using this function called month. And I'm going to be including the date field here. But now I need to convert this month into, which is numeric currently, into a character. And I'm going to be using the function called str, which is short for string. And it's going to ask me for the number, the length. And as well the number of decimal places but then what I also want to do is I also want to include all trim to get rid of any excess spaces especially for months that are only one character long for example January which is month number one I want to be able to uh, compare the two properly so we're gonna click on evaluate and as well we can click the equation editor to view that it's a valid character and there you go so now I have the data appropriate and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to summarize on month and store number or store ID and month in order to get to the same level as my sales total data and I'm going to call this sales data total and I'm going to press OK I'm going to include all fields uh, I need to let's give this a little while this data sets uh, 551,000 lines and now it's aggregated to 60 records which makes sense there's five stores 12 months five times uh, five times 12 is 60 so that's good now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna join it with this summary uh, data set total so I'll click join select it and then here I need to select my two IDs which is going to be store ID and month I'm gonna press OK it doesn't matter whether it's ascending or descending in terms of uh, this particular data set and then as well I'm gonna include all the fields and as well I'm gonna in this case what we should do is we'll do all records in both files just to make sure that there's no new months or new stores are in the sales total so here I'm gonna call it sales data total reconciliation and then I'm going to create a calculated field or a new appended field I'm gonna call this amount variance put this to two decimal places 
and then simply just do amount minus amount sum amount sum being from my transaction sales and amount being from my totals from the financial statements and then I'm gonna see that a few of these months are not reconciling even though they reconcile at the total level it looks like there's some potential mismatching of the data some period issues uh, so that's probably something that we should take a look at and investigate that's okay that's good next thing you want to do is I want to take this um, product and month data or this pricing data and attach it to the sales sales data and what you notice is that for example if I sort this by product ID that the price changes every single month so I need to make sure I'm pulling the correct price into this data so let's go ahead and and do that what I also need to make sure is that my month and my product ID are in the same one so I think in my sales data um, product ID is numeric but my month here is numeric as well but in my other data set it's character so I'm just gonna go ahead double click it's gonna open up the sealed manipulation I'm gonna press OK and then let's go ahead and join this data set these two data sets so I'm gonna go ahead and select the pricing data here and I'm going to match based off of product ID okay it looks like my product IDs are, are different as well so I'm gonna change this as well quickly sometimes the tough part of importing Excel documents is you don't have control over what uh, what type of data type it is so here I'm gonna include it and let's go ahead and product ID product ID and we're gonna go ahead with month month ascending ascending and in this case I'm gonna include all records in the primary because I don't care whether or not there's additional products in the uh, product in the pricing data uh, because those products ha those products have been sold or in that particular month so I'm gonna call this sales data with pricing and I'm only gonna include the pricing field because that's all I really care about press OK and then there you go uh, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna calculate my price variance and I'm gonna make it be price minus price one price one being from the the price master two decimal places and then you're gonna see here doesn't look like there's many but if we go to price variance price variance not equal to zero we're probably gonna see a few so here we see about 24,000 records have the incorrect price some by quite a large margin so that's good and then let's go ahead and test uh, do the recalculation of the amount so here I'm gonna go amount recalc so we're gonna calculate the recalculated amount first uh, we could do it all in one amount, uh, one equation do the variance but I'm just gonna go ahead and recalculate it here so we're gonna do price times quantity times one minus the discount so here I'm doing the price extension then factoring in what discount percentage they get okay good and now we have the recalculated amount and I'm gonna create a new field called amount variance and I'm gonna go amount minus amount recalc which will then give us our variance again it doesn't look like there's that many but when we actually go and look at the amount variance we're gonna see that there's gonna be few records which is 26,000 so more than just a few okay perfect and now what we're going to do is now we're gonna filter for whenever there's an instance where price variance is not equal to zero or amount variance is not equal to zero which indicates that those populations are 
not uh, uh, those populations have issues. So here I'm going to call this um, sales transaction exceptions, transactions exceptions, and then here I'm going to do price variance not equal to zero or amount variance not equal to zero. And some of you may get clever and say, why don't I just do price plus amount not equal to zero, but there's a chance that these two could offset, which make it equal to zero, even though both records have, or both columns have issues. So this is probably the best method to do it. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. And now I have a population of 49,000 records and you'll see here various issues that exist. You could, for example, uh, add in add in a new column. We'll call it exception type. And then here we'll make it a character and we'll make it 10 as an example. So here, if I want to figure out what the type is, I could go if uh, price variance is not equal to zero and amount variance not equal to zero I'll say price and amount issues and then here I'll just put another if statement saying if it's just price variance that's not equal to zero then go price issue sorry my screen's going a little bit haywire uh, and then the last condition is that the amount uh, the last condition is amount issue issue and the reason why this is the residual some because there's not going to be an instance where they're both equal to zero so these are the only three scenarios that can play out And then you'll, okay, maybe not 10 characters is uh, the incorrect length, but you can always, because I made it a virtual character, you can always go back and correct it. So you're gonna make it 20. Okay, maybe 20 is not long enough. Let's go 30. And then you'll see here and you could do like a quick analysis. So for example, here you can go on price exception. Here we're not gonna create a new table, we're just gonna create a view. And let's just take the amount as is. And let's call this exceptions. Exception sum. And then you'll see how many fall into each population. Okay, that's good. And that's good to uh, have this result. I'll save some space on your hard drive if that's the case. And what we're going to do next is we're going to randomly sample. And what you'll see here is a number of different components. So you have the number of records that you want to sample. In this case, 25. The random number seed. So in this case, the random number seed, you don't need to change it. Every time I open and close this random field, uh, you'll get a new random number generator. That number looked too similar for my eyes. So then you'll see here. The random number generator will constantly change. So here, this only really matters if you want to somehow, or for some reason, uh, have the random number generate pull the same samples. Then it's good to write down this number so that later on when you run this random number generator, that it will pull the, ra uh, the exact same samples that you had pulled this time. But in those cases, you don't really care. You just want 25 random samples. Here's if whether or not you want to include or exclude any records. So this is goes from one to the total number of records, which is 49,000. And then here, allow for duplicate records. So in stats, this may be a consideration to allow for resampling, which is basically allowing for duplicate samples. But in this case, we actually want to, once we've sampled it, we want to take it out of the population so it can't be resampled. So let's go ahead and call this exception samples press OK and now we have our 25 exceptions and we can figure out what issues that they have been resolved and that look that looks pretty good to me 
So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below or email me directly. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.